Hello everyone and welcome again. So today we'll be talking about the industrial chemistry option and we'll be continuing our study of sulfuric acid and so in today's lesson we'll be talking about how we actually produce sulfuric acid whereas in the last lesson we talked about how we get the sulfur to do that. So here we'll be talking about sort of these kind of industrial um, chemistry sites where they produce sulfuric acid on a big scale because um, remembering that, that sulfuric acid is a very very important industrial chemical. So the process to convert, convert sulfur to sulfuric acid is essentially what we call the contact process. Okay, so what we do is we have, we're turning this elemental sulfur that we've just dug out of the ground with the frash process and turning it into sulfur, uh, sulfuric acid. Okay, and that's through this contact process. So the first thing we do is we liquefy the sulfur um, just with heat, melting it. Uh, and react it with dry air. So we dehumidify the air that comes in, um, so there's no water. Because remembering when we use the, the frash process, that superheated steam, there was lots of water around. And that kind of inhibited the SO2 production. So what we need to do now is we need to dry the air so that we can actually produce this SO2. Okay, and so as students, you should be familiar with SO2 from your study of chemistry before. Um, it's, the, it's one of the causes of acid rain. Um, so in many cases, we don't want this to be produced. But in the case of sulfuric acid, we actually want to produce this because we want um, sulfur, sulfuric acid to come from this. Okay? So, so we take this, the liquid sulfur and mix it with the dry oxygen, and we get sulfur dioxide out. And then what we do is we react it with more oxygen um, to produce sulfur trioxide. And to, in order to speed that whole process up, we use this vanadium oxide catalyst. And so what happens is we have two sulfur dioxides plus an oxygen molecule, and that gives us two sulfur trioxide um, molecules out. Okay? So that happens in the atmosphere when we have sulfur dioxide emitted to the air. The sulfur dioxide will slowly react with oxygen to form sulfur trioxide and then come down as sulfuric acid. But here we're speeding that process up again because we want to produce sulfuric acid. Okay. So then that SO3 can actually be dissolved in water to form H2SO4. And often that is the way we produce pure sulfuric acid. But there are some limitations in that it can form a sort of mist when it reacts with the water creating a mist of sulfuric acid, which of course is a safety concern, um, as well as our confidence level of purity is often um, a little bit uh, suspect. So we often don't just react sulfur trioxide with water to give you sulfuric acid. Um, but here's our equation anyway. Um, sulfur trioxide plus water gives you the sulfuric acid in pure form. So there's no AQ here, so there's no water. So from that, we can actually form oleum. And oleum is actually the one that we tend to want to produce more because oleum is a little bit easier to transport and handle. So oleum basically can be formed by reacting the pure sulfuric acid from this step with more sulf tri sulfur trioxide from the previous step. So here we've got H2SO4 plus sulfur trioxide gives you this oleum, which is H2S2O7. And this is a little bit nicer to deal with because it's a little bit more stable and a little less volatile than the sulfuric acid in pure form. And also for more of an economical point of view, uh, for about the same amount of volume of sulfuric acid compared to oleum, we can get, almost, we can get twice the amount of sulfuric acid out. So it's quite a um, it's quite nice to transport because we can sort of get it in bulk and then double the amount of sulfuric acid just by diluting it with water. Okay, So oleum is quite a nice chemical to use and it's also referred to sometimes as fuming sulfuric acid um, because when you mix it with water it forms a f it, it actually heats that, that liquid up very much so because you know as or whenever you dissolve um, acids in water there's a lot of heat release 
and that heat release forms a mist of sulfuric acid, which is why we say it's fuming, so to speak. So this oil, oleum is an oily compound, and we use it to transport the sulfuric acid around. Um, it's quite stable, and it won't react with metals as long as there's no water available. Um, if there is water, then it will dilute and become sulfuric acid that we all know is very corrosive. But in oleum form, it's actually very stable and won't react with metals at all. So that's kind of why we use it. Okay. So that concludes this lesson on sulfuric acid production and the contact process. So we looked at all the steps of the sulfuric acid production um, process or the contact process, and we talked about each part and how we do, uh, how we complete each part, um, and also how we transport it once we're done. Okay. So we'll move on to the question segment now. So if a scientist needs to make sulfuric acid and has oleum on hand, describe a process he could use to produce sulfuric acid from the oleum. Okay, so we didn't quite discuss this, but remembering, or we sort of glossed over it, if anything. Um, but we can form oleum from sulfuric acid, but now how do we go back the other way? So what we do is we add water to it. So the addition of water to oleum is all that's required to produce sulfuric acid. So we just have to add water. So here's our reaction. So H2S2O7 plus water gives you two sulfuric acid molecules, and they're both in pure form. Assuming that we use the correct proportions, uh, we can get pure sulfuric acid with no water in it. However, like I said, care must be taken because this is a very strongly exothermic reaction. So that's why we say it's fuming, because it can create so much heat that it vaporizes the liquid around it, and you get a sort of mist of sulfuric acid which of course is very dangerous to breathe in because your, your lungs are full of water or at least lined with water. So we don't want to be breathing this in, so we have to take extreme caution when doing this. Okay. So now question five, explain why oleum is used to transport the sulfuric acid. So why would we use oleum? Well, um, because there's different sort of forms of oleum, um, because different companies do things differently to one another, some oleum compositions are actually solid at room temperature. And for those who have studied chemistry for a long time, which you all should have, solid things are much, much nicer to transport than liquid things um, because they don't move around. They don't, um, and if you puncture the, the, the storage container, they're not going to leak out. They're just, they'll just sit there. So solid at room temperature is great. It's not corrosive. Um, to metals as sulfuric acid. So remembering that sulfuric acid is very corrosive when it's been dissolved in water. But because oleum has no water around, it actually won't do anything when there's metal around it. So if you put it in a metal container, you're okay. That's great. Nothing will happen. Now, assuming there's no water, of course. And so you don't have to spend more money on you know very corrosive resistant materials. You just need a metal container to store this oleum as long as there's no as long as you can ensure there's no water. And even in the presence of a small amount of water, the oleum will simply change to pure sulfuric acid, which will again not react with metal. So this oleum is quite resistant to in the sense that if there is a little bit of water, all it will happen is that the oleum from the first question will collapse into two sulfuric acid molecules. And again, because they've used up that water, there's no water available for the rest of the system. And even the sulfuric acid in pure form, assuming there's no water around, won't react with metal. So the reason we use oleum is a kind of safety net. Um, if we just use pure sulfuric acid, um, put it in a metal container, that would be OK. But if there, in the event that there was a small amount of water there, then um, we'd be in severe problems. Whereas if we put the oleum in that container, and even if there is a small amount of water, we still are okay because it'll just convert to sulfuric acid, and then we're back to square one, which is okay. Therefore, metal containers can be used very effectively. Okay, So that's the main reason why we transport oleum rather than sulfuric acid, for safety and for the fact that we can use metal containers. So why is pure sulfuric acid safe to transport in metal containers. So now the question is, well, we've always known that sulfuric acid is very, very corrosive, but now I'm telling you that the pure sulfuric acid is perfectly fine in a metal container. So what's going on? 
So if there's no water present, there's no dissolution of the sulfuric acid. That's the key. So if there's no water, there's no way that those H pluses, which are all those protons, can get separated from their molecules. Now if there's no dissolution, there are no free hydrogen ions, as I just mentioned. And so because of this, the pure sulfuric acid shows no reactivity towards metal because there's no H plus. And, that, and remember that the H plus is really doing the damage for the, for the acid case. Um, so that's the reason why sulfuric acid, even though we've always known it's very corrosive, because we've always seen it as aqueous, is actually not very corrosive when it's in pure form. That ends today's lesson on the contact process. So we've talked about all of the steps of the contact process. And we've talked in depth about what transporting and sort of the logistics of creating this sulfuric acid are and why we choose oleum rather than sulfuric acid. So in the next lesson, we'll talk about more safety concerns regarding the use of sulfuric acid and oleum. And so I look forward to seeing you in our next lesson. Thank you.